Pumzile conversations with Pumzile. Yes, yes, the girl next door. Hi guys, it's been a while. It's been a minute. Oh, I love the song actually. I love the song. I'll just play it a little bit in the background. I hope you can hear it. So I thought I should come here today and say hi everyone and just do a little bit of some reflection. Um, with the channel uh, yes conversations with the Pumzile the girl next door it's still here we're still going on um, I have interviewed uh, a lot of people who have meant so much to me who have really 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 inspired me in different ways so why I'm here today I just wanna say sure I am grateful I am grateful I am thankful I am blessed sure we had conversations to a physical one yes when we're not online we go physical so we hosted um conversations with poems in the tune uh, on the 28th of august in alberton oh what an amazing day what an amazing day so unfortunately yes we did we have a recording but uh, we're still putting it together. I'm not sure if it will be okay for this channel because it was such a busy day we had stalls we had sure we had fun we had blomanati radio um pro broadcasting live here so it was it was it was busy but anyway if you missed it don't worry more to come more to come so we balancing conversations with pomzi um the youtube channel and the physical events because uh here a whole lot of things have have changed as you know we're still living under the condition of covid 19 and we're still limiting meeting people in big scales so yeah so we come here so that at least we don't miss um conversations or we don't miss other things so that's why we do both so guys um we're working on conversations three uh, a physical event as well and i'll tell you more about it but hey i would like you guys to go back to um, the conversations that I had with some people, like I had entrepreneurs that have young people who are doing great things, like your Lindo Hair Products, and I think Charlie, the booksman, I always smile when I think of, of Charlie because I think that conversation, it's one of um, the ones that I really enjoyed the most. I enjoyed all of them, but I think with Charlie, you know, when you talk to somebody that you don't know and you interview them, you've never met before. So it was kind of, and it was a beginning of a beautiful uh, friendship, business relationship. I've learned so much from him. He was also part of conversations too, where he was here selling his books. So there is so much in store for, for, for this channel. There is so much growth that I'm looking at. Um, I interviewed Udokta, um, Dr. Knox. Yes, Unogutula Msimang you know so that was another beautiful conversation with Okoko Knox, you know talking about her book you know so there's a whole lot of other things guys that um have we, we've already covered with conversations with Pumzile but there's so much more in store that we wanna we wanna do so I interviewed two ladies 
uh, who are my friends, uh, still my best friends, actually, who lost their husbands at a very young age, you know, and we talked about grief, we talked about where they are now and how are they doing. So Conversations 3, it's also um, in line with that way. As much as we try to move on, as much as we try to live happily um, ever after with our situations or broken hearts um, and all, you know, different things that we go through as, as, as people, sometimes we still need to go back to what has happened in our life and how we've survived because that in between is the main person that helps other people, you know, learn and grow or when they see somebody who has actually made some strides, you know, to, to be better or move on with their lives, even if the scars are there, but they have not given up in life. You know, they continue to do the best that they, they, they can under all circumstances. You know, it motivates others. It teaches others, you know, strong will of, of, of living. I too um, come from a background of being, you know, um, had a, a difficult childhood, a good childhood when it, come, when it comes to my family life and all that, but something happened to me that changed my, my, my life, my perspective forever, and I had to grow up in case and not grow up with my, with my parents because of being, you know, violated, you know, uh, being gang raped at a very young age and I had to move. So that changed a narrative, that changed my life to, to who I am now. And um, some conversations, they stem from that because as I grew up, I met a lot of people with different stories and how they survived their stories, how they dealt with their lives, you know, if with everything that has happened in their lives. So such stories or these stories are the ones that really breathe um, hope, you know, and we need to keep them going. We need to keep um, telling these stories because somebody learns, somebody grows, you know, when they see that, yes, you, you might be broken, but when they look at your life, like you do, you're doing something right. You, you are managing, you are not, um, falling. If you fall, you, you still get up. Like I was playing the song that, um, Conqueror. I love the song. It's one of the songs that I play almost every other morning when I feel down or when I don't have strength to go on because so much is happening in my life, in my personal life, at work, or just, you know, when I'm overwhelmed by, by, by love, you know, by life. Um, in, in general, you know, I have kids and, you know, parenting is one of those things that is not the easiest. Um, some, some people make it seem like it's easy. It's not, you know, I, I try to have fun with my kids. I try to level down. I try not to parent as much as uh, I would love to parent, you know, parenting is just, for me, it's just a term. So I just have a relationship with my kids. Yes. It's mom and kids. Um, but I try to be upumzile, you know, I try to, when I level up with my kids, I talk to them at their level. I have fun with them at their level. So I converse, converse with them at their level. I don't have this, I'm your, I'm your mother. You must respect me and all that. I just let them be. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to say I, I don't have kids who, um, for, for me to maybe be putting a harsh or a harder or I had to instill discipline of some sort. So I'm lucky in that sense. That's why sometimes it, it seems easy, but worrying about their well-being, worrying about their life, you know, where they're going. Yes, they might still be young, you know, yes, I'm, I have the eldest who's 25, six, who's an adult now, um, my second one, 17. It all already, you know, will be adult, 18 soon and going to matric and then a 10 year old. Those dynamics, um, you know, of caring about them in their different, different ages, their different personalities, their different um, issues that they go through in their lives. It's not easy, you know, because when you, when you parent, you know, sometimes you are faced with stuff like uh, there's a favorite, there's a last born, there's a first born, there's a middle child syndrome. So all of that is in there. But one tries, like I try to really just be, be upumzile to them, be a person that I am 
to them and not wear a hat of, of a parent. Uh, if I wear a hat of a parent, it's just me making sure that the household is, is, is okay. They are comfortable where they sleep. They are comfortable. They can eat. They dress up. So that's the parenting that I do. But in terms of relationship, really, I put parenting aside and I go like, tell me who you are and I'll just be who I am to you in, in your space because for me it's easier. I don't know if I make sense. So yeah, so that we're going to talk about parenting and um, there was one show I did with Ikwekwezi um, where I spoke about parenting with different uh, beliefs system, you know. That is something that keeps on coming back. I am <laughs> sometimes very overwhelmed because I still get people asking me how to navigate um, spirituality, religion um, in our homes, you know, where you find the belief systems are different, you know, when it comes to you and your kids or you and your parents or you or your, your in-laws where everybody is believing in different things and things are happening and you don't know how to deal with um, being yourself or authentically be where you are. Like, let's say politically, I am bad with politics. I, I don't subscribe to any. Uh, I vote if I have to vote. And when I vote, I don't even think I vote with my heart or my mind. I think I vote with my blackness. <laughs> I vote with, um, because I, it, um, not, I don't want to say because it's a must. Yes, I'm responsible, you know, um, that whoever we put in government is somebody that who would um, help us. But with what I've learned, a little bit that I've learned, I always, now you know, I always vote for minority, you know, so that we are able to get other political parties in parliament so that when decisions are made, at least it's not majority that is just full in the house uh, because then they tend to take over. I don't want to call them. But let's say we have different political beliefs in the house and how we want to teach our kids. Let's say like my my 25 year old who can just decide like I'm not voting and I don't want to vote. How do I force him to vote? How do I instill um, some other principles or understanding why should he vote? Food. Is it important or not? Those kind of discussions where, where as parent do we get to a point whereby our children's um, views, beliefs, or choices, when they make those choices, we get to a point and take a step back and say, it's their choice. Let me move into religion, which um, I think it's, it's easier and common, you know. Um, like we have spirituality, which is something that more African people are learning and understanding. But there's a difference between spirituality and religion, you know. And when one gets into the point of embracing spirituality, there's misconceptions or there's per a, a perception that one is worshipping ancestors, one is looking into um, not believing that God exists or, you know, the whole religion, whichever uh, denomination that one chooses. So there's those kind of things. And we can see there's a lot of um, people who are moving into Ubungoma, you know, the traditional healing and all that, which that is something totally different as well to the spirituality. <laughs> So, you know what, I'm having fun with this. I'm having fun with learning all these things. Like uh, with Conversations too. we hosted uh, the Great Empire of Kemet. My goodness, you know, when I got to understand what Kemet means, like Kemet means black. I'm like, what? You know, so when I, I, I you know, the whole Egypt, Egyptian, like um, where we started as black people, uh, our history as black people. So it was enlightening for me to learn uh, that I would advise everybody, don't close anything that you don't know of. Open your mind, open your heart to learn something. And then from that, make a decision. From that, decide which way you want to go. You would be really, you would be surprised um, on how much you can learn as a, as a person when you, when you open yourself to, to just learning and just hearing other people, other people's beliefs, other people's views, and, and not make them your own and not challenge their beliefs. Um, you know, so when I got to know that Kemet means black, you know, and 
our being, our human race, our melanin, you know, how, how we are when we talk about different races, you know, that it has nothing to do with one political inclination. It has nothing to do with uh, religious beliefs, but it has everything to do with you being born black or you being born in a certain race. And that's all. And then from that, you know, what I took out for me was what does my blackness mean? What are the things that are authentically black? That has nothing to do with anything, you know, nothing to do with, let's say, if I want to vote for DA, it has nothing to do with me voting for EDA or any other white or different political party. No, just me being black. It has nothing to do with a religion that I choose being Roman, being Anglican, being um, um, like proudly impostoli, has nothing to do with that, but just what it means to be me in this skin color, in this blackness. Oh yeah, I know that like, I'm kind of light, but hey. So anyway, <laughs> I love that, love that. But no, just being, being black. And what I've learned, um, it's something that we all know um, with Indians. The Indian people have done this so well, where being Indian comes first. What they do in their communities, what they do in their businesses, what they do in their families, you cannot take away their Indianness if there's something like that. You can never, including religion, including every Thing that they do like um you know prayer times or like how they buy from each other you cannot take away that from them they do it very well so when you take that scenario and say what is it that we do as black Kemet people that is authentically us it, it, it's not diluted by any other beliefs just by us being being sick so <laughs> my coffee is getting black no getting cold you know uh, joys of having black coffee yes so it's it's just one of those things that were an aha moment you know i have embraced myself being being an african child i've loved myself as being an african child but i think i've been um in a situation or i've been that person who likes to be for everybody, for everything. Uh, I buy into everything and choose to be um, liberal about everything, you know. Um, I've never taken a step back and be proudly black, you know, and be pro-black and everywhere I go, let's say if I have to defend every, anything at work uh, that it has any racial issues, I've, I've, I've never been that the child or the person or the, the adult who would stand up for um, anything when it comes to race, you know. Yes, we can talk about other different things where like uh, gender issues, uh, the GPVs. Um, yes, I, you know, strongly believe that I would fight for that. I would, my opinion will matter. I would even tweet about, you know, gender issues, gender roles, or issues of homosexuality, issues of LGBTIQ, you know, all of those things I would, but I've never embraced my blackness, my things that, um, black, black, like I was born black and what are the things that we do as black people or we have been doing before where our parents, our grandparents, our great great parents, what they used to do, you know. So I've I've I've, I've liked them. I've been the person whereby oh, I'm cultured, you know, I'm cultured, I'm traditional, you know, there are things that will definitely make sure that I do that says I'm I'm black. Like let's talk marriage, you know, the lobolas, you know, those are the things that I pride myself with and how it's done, how it's done well. And you know, but I've never um felt so strong about being black after that event my word like the simplest simplest simple thing today to, to to say just enjoy being black and do the things that black where people can look into your race and say oh wow you know and and and, and 
and want to be part of it and and maybe you know I admire that you know and know that they don't they, they don't belong in in that stay where you are we stay where we are like no matter what i can i can i can have a sari i can I, actually i do have it i can wear it at any wedding and all that but i'll never be indian you know and i can never um have my son stay here with um the wife whenever he decides that he's gonna get married and kids and and, and have a family i'll never have a situation whereby all of us live in the same house we've grown up to Ubuti. you know but indians they have that thing no matter how they have that thing is their thing they do it very well they do it so 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 well even opening a business whereby there will be patel a business here in pasha there'll be patel here a business yama duvet curtains and all that and the whole building is one family owning all those businesses but different products we that's not us you know but it's something that we can learn it's something that like generally me i really admire so those are the things that I, I, I would love to bring in more and more and, and, and talk about. So I was contacted by another young girl. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this interview who, I don't know if I have to share this now, but the issue of um, uh, trust, the issue of young kids um, having illusy, having, you know, going through that space the spiritual gifts. Uh, we had an encounter here at, at my child's school, my daughter's school, whereby we were called um, as parents to discuss the issue of many kids getting sick, uh, skipping classes, um, and having these spiritual encounters and attacks. And it's it's it's, it's growing and it's, it's, it's worrying because now you find a situation whereby we come as different parents with different beliefs as well, where if something is happening, then Kubangati, the school is, doesn't understand or the school is discriminating against kids who um, have a calling. And you also find kids who don't have an outlet, you know, because their parents don't know how to deal with, with, with such. Um, I'm, I'm privileged because I go to a church that really embraces um, Ubungoma, Ubunyanga, you know, the issues of uh, gifted people. So um, I have an open mind. I understand it very well. And yes, again, talking about being black, those are other things that they are part of. They've been happening in our culture, you know, um, where you have um, is, is Angoma you know and there's nothing wrong with that so it's it's difficult now when we th there's that and then there's religion and then there's uh, the whole diversification of how as a black community we have embraced different things and then don't believe in other things that actually have been happening in our community and then now we have these young kids who they are at high school, they are going through the most, they don't even know who to talk to. And even if you, we don't understand, even if like me, me are shooting story, but I don't know anything about Ogotwasa. I don't know anything about that journey. I don't know anything about how it feels. You know, I know what I know. I know how I got into that space and i know how i feel when when I, when i'm there but there's things that don't happen to me that happen to other people or other kids so i i cannot judge that i i cannot even come here and 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 have a an opinion about because only them know until it happens to me then definitely i'll be able to say something um i, I, I will say something about it so those kind of things so this young girl wants to um have a um, start a buzzer fund or a yeah something like that you know um a funding for young kids who have a calling who might not have money to go to Ugo, Ugo Tuasa to the um, uh, facilities or institutions and and also in terms of counseling where 
she can get people who understand the space very well to assist the kids to know what this means and how to navigate it whether for or not for it so that there's that part of you know understanding that whatever you are going through you are not mad but there are different ways of going through this and how also to bridge the gap between parents and kids, you know, who are going through um, uh, this situation. So I was so overwhelmed and I'm like, okay, hmm, why me? <laughs> you know, so the beauty of, of, of this is, you know, sometimes when you put yourself in a situation of general understanding where you don't judge, you don't have an opinion about something that you don't know, but you have a space to let people talk about their environment, talk about their situation, talk about what they understand, talk about where they are and how they've gone through it and how they can help others, you know? So we need a lot of platforms to allow people to share their opinions, to share their journey without being judged, without um, anybody questioning why this how you know like or, or, or be anything like so i thought okay possibly it's because the platform has been showing different things different conversations where now people are free to say you know this is the person that who can help us uh, make other people understand so i am looking forward to it and definitely so pro into uh, to it and will help um, the best way i can you know just to make sure that we help um, those who need that type of so yes there is so much in store so today i just woke up feeling like oh you know what i have not spoken to my people i have not been on my channel since the last conversation with with Deborah Ho on my friends um let's talk which was another you know beautiful conversation that i have and topic for another day guys where we talk about issues of our our the other gender the other gender Abu Baba, Abu Budi, men, boys, you know, in, in any category, they're going through the most as well. And sometimes because we, as women, we got to a point whereby we are so empowered um, and we, we, as they will say, we go fast. So we, we, we are able to, you know, share our opinions. We are able to fight our fights. We are able to just be ourselves wherever we go. And males um, in some areas of their lives, they struggle, you know, with communicating their feelings. They are struggling with um, going to other people and tell them or ask for help. You know, they learn to be men. I don't know where uh, all that started or came from i'm not a man i'm a woman so um i wouldn't know you know how most men grew up but the general general status quo is men don't cry we know uh, men are supposedly have to be the stronger physically emotion emotionally mentally and all that and those things are so not true they are so <laughs> uh yeah you know it's 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 a, it's definitely a topic for another day because we find um the issues of uh, gender-based violence where we find a lot of male killing and beating up women and all that so it means there are emotional issues that men go through but uh how they deal with it they deal with it in 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 other ways that are harmful to 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 themselves to the people that they love and their kids so um Deboho spoke about the outlet that men need outlet but in our conversation what also came out which is who um another event that i hoped we would have hosted by now where we get uh, men to come talk about their issues and we as women be in a position to be in that in that space with them but to say we are here to listen we are here to openly know what you go through because of us and we want to be better partners we want to be better mothers we want to be better sisters we want to be better women um for you in all different spaces not necessarily talking about relationship but even at work you know how we can be able to let men open up and be themselves and be themselves and us to just keep quiet and and really honestly give them the space to be themselves um, and not be 
loud <laughs> or and, and, and not allow them the space to when a man tries to be emotional and be open, you know, and, and not look at them like, Ooh, what's about CC book? You know, those kind of things, the things that we do as women that affects our 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 men, our boy, boy child, boy children, you know. So that space, um, I hope I have um I think few who confirmed, males who confirm that they wanna speak out. You know, we have men who um single parenting and half of the time we don't know about their struggles we don't know about what they're going through but yay come mother's day come women's month we are always loud you know father's day yeah happy father's day we, we move on you know yes we've known about the men's conference that men men's conference um which i don't know whether it does exist <laughs> for real because you know but if those structures are there they are they happening far from us as women and then we judge and we look at them as okay if they're going uh out it's because they're going to be men and be naughty and all that and then we are left outside of their and of their of, of their issues or environment but when we have our women conferences our gender what 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 conversation matches and all that we make sure that they hear us we make sure that they they there you know, we, we, we flood social media, we flood everything they will hear us. So it will be nice to have that where men take up space and they talk to us so that we can be able to hear them. So that is coming. So I am so grateful and I know I've gone on and on and on about everything. So this is Conversations with Upomzi, the girl next door. So please um, subscribe so that I can continue to do what I do um, best and bring new conversations that are healing because i am the catalyst for healing uh, conversations so let's do this together and if you have a story to share if you would like to be yes if you'd like to be invited to conversations with pumzele please feel free make sure that you put a comment or go to our facebook page or my facebook page Jamini Pumzele, or when you check the girl next door I think that would be easy to, to find me. Pumzele Padedi, Pumzele Lamini. I'm all um, there. Go on Gamma Socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So I'm there. Oh, and LinkedIn. So, and then YouTube. So if you want to be part of conversations with Pumzele in any way, in any way, do hit me up. Do hit me up. Do hit me up. Do hit me up. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. And have a wonderful day time year of your life all around and stay healthy stay in there you know in there you know find you and stay in yourself in your lane in your being and just enjoy to be alive so god bless and thank you conversations with Pumzile. bye